Hello, I am here today with Sheila Dorsey Vinton from the Asian Community and Cultural Center here in Lincoln, Nebraska, and they are the recipient of Share the Plate for September 2021. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Yes, I am the Executive Director CEO of the Asian Community and Cultural Center, and I'm so grateful to you and this congregation for having us as the Share the Plate recipient. Uh, we appreciate that so much. Uh, I'm happy to share a little bit about the Asian Center and our history, and then um, you know would love to continue the conversation. So, the Asian Center was founded in 1992 as a joint project between uh, the Lincoln Interfaith Council at the time, uh, that was resettling many many Vietnamese refugees. Mm -hmm. And community leaders of Asian descent in Lincoln that were from many different backgrounds that said, we need a place to celebrate cultural heritage. And those two groups came together to form the Asian Community and Cultural Center. So from the very beginning, our mission has been to provide human services and to share cultural heritage and celebrate it, right? Um, so we've been doing that very well since that time. Uh, in um, 2006, we received a grant that we called the Fusion Project. And with that grant, we started to serve all immigrants and refugees. And we have really done that since 2006. And so at the Asian Center, you will find that we serve people from Sudan, from the Congo, from Afghanistan, from Iraq, um, and uh, in addition to the Asian community in town. And so uh, we still primarily serve people from Asia. Uh, that's about 70 to 75% of our clients, but uh, we are inclusive of, of other communities as well that need our services. And so our staff speak around 15 languages in order to provide services, we think of ourselves as cultural brokers. So uh, our staff come from the communities they serve. They, so they have a firm understanding of the needs of the community and also language uh, is the, the primary um, driver, I guess. And then uh, they're professionals and they're trained as community health workers, domestic violence advocates, breastfeeding educators, diabetes educators. Um, we have lots of health programs, mental health peer support specialists, uh, mental health first aid, uh, WAM and RAP programs. Uh, so our, our staff uh, really help uh, of the client that sits down in front of them uh, with holistic services. So that client can sit down and, and come for one issue. Maybe they need help filling out SNAP uh, benefit applications or other sorts of things. And then that staff member can ask some questions and find out that they need some help in other areas. And so, um, you know, uh, any person who comes on average is helped with seven different services in a visit. Wow. And that person on average comes about nine times per year for assistance at the Asian Center. I understand that you have a big event coming up here soon. Can you want to tell us some more about that? Yes, the Harvest Moon Festival will be September 19th. That's a Sunday uh, in Antelope Park at the Band Shell. That's where we have had Harvest Moon Festival for a number of years now. It's a great location to have a festival. And uh, that will be from four till 7.30. And uh, it's a wonderful celebration with music and dancing and food and uh, you know, lots of booths for people to walk around and, and see activities for the kids, uh, lion dancing. And awesome. uh, we're gonna do some vaccinations for COVID and, and the flu shot will be available at the, the uh, event as well this year. So we really appreciate you uh, supporting us with the Share the Plate initiative. Thank you so much. Awesome. So there'll be music and dancing mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. information. 
Mm -hmm. um, some things that were fun for kids. Great. Well, we'll, we'll definitely let people know about that and get some folks out for that event. Um, thank you so much for telling us more about the mission of the organization. Also, I, um, I have to admit that I, um, did not know that you had expanded to uh, serving other um, communities within Lincoln. And that's really awesome. Um, did you say that there are 19 different languages spoken by your staff? Um, pro, pro, last I counted, it was around 15, but we just hired some new staff. So it might be close to 19 now. <laughs> no. Oh, great. Well, most of our staff speak more than one, you know, um, sure. They, they often speak around four or five, actually. So wow, you know, that's pretty amazing. Some uh, overlap. And uh, yeah, uh, we just hired a person today, in fact, from Afghanistan originally, uh, who is going to help us with uh, all of the community efforts and making sure that we are serving people who are coming from Afghanistan uh, as they're arriving. We know people will be start arriving very soon. So. Right. Um, so we're, we'll be ready. That's great. <clears throat> I, um, I understand there are several organizations in Lincoln that are preparing for that uh, mm -hmm. also. So one thing I was curious about as you were talking is, is there or has there been any discussion about changing the name um, so that it's broader? Yeah, we, we have talked a little bit about it and uh, the board's concluded that, you know, maybe we should, but actually people from Afghanistan are from Asia, right? The, the people that, that we continue to serve with, with the exception of the folks from Africa uh, originally um, are largely from the Asian continent. And right. so, so our name actually does reflect uh, really the more majority of the people that we serve. Yes. That makes sense. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. And, and so we also want to be sensitive to uh, the the needs of people as they might want to form an African community association or something like that. We're happy sure. to host at the moment, but um, we think that at least the board at that time was comfortable in saying, let's respect the heritage of uh, and the vision of the, our founders uh, in, in creating what they created. Sure, that yeah. makes sense. And also I was wondering if it would, um, be detrimental in terms of the name recognition that you've built already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if the communities that you serve are aware, yeah. then that's the most important. That's part. the most important thing. If people are coming in the door to get help, then, then that right. doesn't necessarily does it. Yeah, exactly. So um, one thing I've been asking all of the folks that I've been interviewing this year on Zoom is to help me understand or help us understand what the impact of the pandemic has been. How, you know, how has it shifted for you? Are you getting to the point where you're back to having in-person meetings? Did, you know, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, uh, did, that, did that ever cease completely? Yeah, well, so the pandemic uh, actually affected the Asian Center in um, a different way than maybe some other organizations and that we had to kick it into a higher gear even than what we were doing before because people were in such need. Um, and so we were busier than we'd ever been actually, and still are. Um, so, and we had to be creative. We had to find ways to help people in the way that we could keep people safe, uh, our staff and the clients. And so, you know, we did move a lot of our work to one-on-one -on -one, uh, phone or conference calls or um, meeting outside in the park, um, any, any of those ways that we could still help people but, but keep people safe. And sure. now that, that people are vaccinated, it is a little bit easier. We are still, we, we do do some meetings in the Asian Center um, and most of our clients are vaccinated and we're vaccinated. We have a mandatory uh, mask requirement since the uh, city elevated our risk level uh, mm -hmm. at the Asian Center. So everyone who comes in to the office is masked um, and most are vaccinated. And so we feel fairly safe in continuing to do our programming the way that, that we've been doing it, but with spacing and, 
and you know with those safety precautions in mind sure and meeting outside when possible too well i'm not surprised to hear that your um caseload or you know uh, traffic mm -hmm. has increased mm -hmm. um i've seen that with um a lot of different nonprofits, including those who are helping folks with food and um, trying to fill the gaps really um, a lot of people as we know you know lost their jobs and um, you know had different circumstances because of the pandemic and unfortunately we're not at the end yet um, no. you know it's yeah, continuing so I think we're all sort of bracing ourselves for winter <laughs> again yep yep you know that's true yeah we we uh... We're definitely uh, trying to provide support. A lot of our families have um, folks that were on the front lines and working in uh, the meatpacking plants, uh, areas where people were getting sick uh, rather quickly, you know, early on when we didn't have a vaccine and we didn't know really what was going on or how to protect ourselves as well as we do now. Um, and so we had to do a lot of support for families in dropping off food and dropping off um, supplies to help uh, keep their homes clean and, and safe uh, when we thought that it was all contact and not right. Yeah. Topic, right. Exactly. So, um, yeah. So lots of food, lots of lots of uh, handoffs of of items that people might need and, and then support and then getting people signed up for testing. When testing became available, we wanted to get people tested as as uh, soon as they needed testing, and right. and then you know signing people up for vaccinations too. So that's, that's awesome. a lot of what we're doing right now is is really focusing on um, helping educate folks about vaccines and um, you know just just facilitating the process. Uh, if, so if you put out communication about that, let's say, um, mm -hmm. to let's say you put out printed communication, how many languages do you um, include? We typically do primarily four languages. I mean, every everybody can do it in uh, as many languages as they need. But when we're when we're doing uh, publications, we do Vietnamese, Karen, Chinese, and Arabic mostly, mm -hmm. and uh we do egyptian arabic but there is also kurdish so we've done kurdish or karanji kurdish uh, as well and then we're going to start to do farsi also awesome yeah that's great um so another thing that i often ask is aside from monetary support um once people do feel safe you know coming back out into the world again um and and some do now. Um, are there other ways that our members and friends can help? Um, you know, is there a, a sign up to get on the list to be volunteers at events yeah. or anything like that? Yes, we do have a volunteer application on our website. Okay. That we always need volunteers to help with our youth programs and especially with citizenship and our English programs. So. Um, our youth programs are after school. Usually there, there are some that meet during the, the school day, but mostly the help that we need is for after school help. Um, so many of our volunteers have found that to be so rewarding uh, to come and help uh, youth that are either refugees or else children of immigrants and refugees. And so, sure. you know, their, their parents aren't experts at our educational system. And so they don't, uh, they they need some assistance in how to navigate that, um, but then and then of course if the children themselves are are refugees or immigrants then they don't know the system either. So, um, sure. getting people um, or helping people with their FAFSA or scholarship applications, and thinking about careers, uh, just after school homework help too. So. Uh, that's a lot of what our volunteers have to do. You mentioned citizenship also. What, is, what does that entail? Yeah. So we have several citizenship classes and uh, volunteers can help in testing people. People have to uh, take a test and it's usually a verbal test where they have to know the answers to 100 citizenship questions. And so 
people need a lot of help in rehearsing those uh, questions and the answers and, and trying to memorize it. Most native born Nebraskans would not pass the citizenship test, I have to say. That's what I've heard. <laughs> it is, uh, yeah, uh, a very good civics lesson for all of us if we you know, took the time to try to learn those 100 questions. Uh, but there's also um, other pieces to that and, and also learning um, English and just general American history and, and that kind of thing too. Sure. Yeah, I think it's sort of ironic that um, they ask so many questions that I might not be able to answer. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's just ironic to me. Mm -hmm. um, well, really, um, the one thing that I am still curious about also, because um, you've done an excellent job of telling us about, you know, what what your organization does on a day-to-day -day basis. But um, I just realized that based on what you said, I believe your 30 year anniversary is coming up. Are you going to be doing some um, extra special celebrations next year? Yes, we hope to. <laughs> it, it is hard to uh, prepare and think about in this pandemic and we're all just you know so busy just helping people right in the moment but I sure. yes we should definitely celebrate 30 years shouldn't we <laughs> <laughs> well again um you know if if that's something where um we can be helpful uh if you need an extra large group of volunteers um yeah. you know for a, a big event or something don't hesitate okay. to reach out right. um because I know often especially right now like you said it's very hard to plan and I think, um, you know, what I what we're finding um, in our own organization also is that people are holding back to wait and see, you know, what's going to happen um, in the next few months. And it's especially if if people have kids of their own and that kind of thing, it's just really hard to plan right now. And so I think um, just in general, but but especially right now, people often are looking for you know, opportunities as a one-time thing, not something that they can, they, they need to commit to doing for an entire year or something like that. Um, so I think that's um, amazing that, and I will make sure that people know that they can um, get their name out there as someone to contact for that. That'd be great. Well, that could be an awesome project. I hadn't thought about that, like uh, a group planning or or hosting a 30-year celebration that or just be. yeah just being a crew to yeah. help with you know if there's yeah. if it's going to be a bigger event than even your normal you know size um mm -hmm. events you'll need extra people so that's true that's yeah true. i'm really looking forward to the event on the 19th i'm hoping to make it down there and, and see the lion dancers and yeah. and get to connect with some folks so i really appreciate you telling us more about that and um it unless you can think of something else that you'd like to share with us, a success story or um, that kind of thing. I think that you've done a great job. Oh, thank you. Uh, you know, I mean, we have so many success stories, of course. Um, yeah. And, and I may have failed to mention all of the programs that we have, but, um, you know, our, our programs run the gamut. So we, we have our family resource program and in that program, that's, that is partially where we um, do the citizenship and ELL classes, but it is also uh, where we help with the day-to-day -day, um, stuff of interaction with human services. So that could be legal aid, for example. We do uh, so much assistance in um, you know, preventing eviction or pr uh, preventing people who have had wage theft, mm. uh, that sort of thing. When when a, a client comes and talks to our staff, then they know, oh, well, no, you, that's not okay. Well, you, let's connect you with legal aid and, and we, let's solve this problem. And that's happened over and over again. Um, we have a domestic violence program and uh, through our women's program, we do uh, crafting classes and sewing classes so women can have a place to come and uh, learn uh, empowerment and and to have fun basically, but then also to gain an education about uh, what domestic violence is and how to prevent it and uh, what resources are available to them if they need it or they know people who need it. Uh, 
our youth program I mentioned before. We have a seniors program that's near and dear to my heart uh, where uh, we have Vietnamese seniors coming with aging partners on Wednesdays. And then on Mondays, we have an international seniors program. So uh, seniors from any community can come and, and do some fun things. We take people on field trips and um, provide food and dancing and, and whatever people really wanna do. Uh, That's great. Our health education advocacy program, I mentioned it a little bit, but uh, that staff are trained as community health workers. So they're out there helping people make doctor's appointments and monitoring their diabetes if they need assistance and like, you know, understanding when to take this pill and when to take that pill. Uh, and no, those are that those two bottles are uh, the same pill. Don't take one of each. Uh, you know, there, there are a lot of hazards when you can't uh, read English and the, the directions on how to take pills are, are all in English. So they, they need assistance there. Yeah. That's amazing. I love that you are um, connecting people with other services in the community. If if the need is not, you know, completely mm -hmm. met by the center, um, and I know that um, I know there's a lot of good uh, stuff happening. Yeah. We we are. Um, I'm. I've heard we are known uh, as you know one of the largest refugee and immigrant um, sent you know populations per capita um, in the United States. And uh, I think that um, if I'm correct, I think that's probably started in the seventies when the Vietnamese mm -hmm. folks um, started coming. Yes. When I was in elementary school. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, so many people have been here a very long time, um, but people are still coming from Vietnam to join their family, yeah. right? So uh, uh, that's the largest group that we serve at the Asian Center as uh, people with Vietnamese ancestry or who sp still speak Vietnamese uh, primarily. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And um, we will get this information out to folks and, and be in touch um, at the end of the month again. Sounds great. Thank you, Jean.